from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a special CUBE conversation from our Boston area studio. I'm happy to welcome back to the program Bobby Patrick, who's the Chief Marketing Officer of UiPath. Bobby, great Thank to you, see Stu. you. Thank you, Stu, it's great to be here. All right, so Bobby, uh, you know, we, we've known you for many years, yeah. there were a couple of jobs, uh, you know, uh, you and I have talked at many of the cloud shows over right. the year, uh, and uh, especially companies that were at the lead of that wave, they talked about cloud first. Right. And so now, uh, you know, not surprising <laughs> at UiPath, uh, who is one of the leaders in robotic process automation. Uh, the tagline I'm hearing is automation first uh, at, at UiPath. So a uh, bunch of news, a lot of updates. We had the cube at UiPath Forward in Miami right. last year. We're going to have it back in Las Vegas. So a lot of ground to cover. But uh, I guess set the stage for us. You know, RPA is uh, might not be an acronym that comes off of everybody's tongues just yet. Yeah. But boy, there's a lot of buzz in the marketplace. Companies growing like wildfire. So yeah. uh, you know, g g give us kind of the, the the dynamics to set things. Yeah, up. absolutely. I think you know people have spent the last five, ten years trying to go digital, right? Digital transformation has been really hard. It's uh, largely been IT led, um, and IT swamped, and, and has a million things to do. Uh, and along comes a technology that actually you know business users and business analysts and subject matter experts can use and and go digital quite quickly, get real outcomes fast, and um, and have complete payback on all in the entire projects in less than six months or nine months. It's kind of unheard of in IT, and so. You know, RPA has now established itself now as as really the, the best path to digital, going digital. It's actually the best path to using AI as well. That's coming together uh, uh, quickly. But I think what's 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 if you step back and zoom out a bit, you know, the cloud first era brought brought incredible agility to organizations, right? And in the very beginning of cloud, if you recall, Stu, right? You know, IT was kind of against cloud, right? Uh, we're never going to go out of our data center, right? We're never going to go off Siebel and sell to Salesforce, all those kind of things, right? Um, and but cloud, the business saw cloud as a as a mechanism to drive fast agility uh, and to you know drive new economics for the business and and so on. Well, you know the cloud era is kind of behind us now, and it's obvious, right? Today, the automation first era has a very similar uh, view to it, right? It is about uh, rapid agility, mass productivity, uh, competitive or a complete company transformation. And uh, in that era, we, we, you know, we call it the automation first era. So it's less a tagline for us. We want our competitors to use it. We want the market to use it. We want our partners to use it. We want people to talk about this automation first era. And we think it's a C-level conversation. It's a board level conversation. Um, and it's, it's going to completely change the landscape of, of how companies work over the next uh, 20 years. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely reminds me much about you know that stealth IT and then IT. Uh, as we said, IT needs to respond <coughs> to this because if they don't, uh, the business will just go elsewhere. So. Right. Uh, absolutely, this wave of automation is something that we see uh, in the you know so many aspects of the market. Intelligence and automation right. is something that we talked about for decades, but is real today and. In our industry, there's no better proof point that something has reached a certain state of the right. market uh, than uh, you know the venerable Gartner uh, has come out with a magic quadrant. Right. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, we're going to put the graphic and talk a little bit about it up here. The Gartner magic came up, and in the leadership quadrant, uh, UiPath uh, you know is is up in front. Yeah, it's terrific. It's uh, I I think you know Gartner magic quadrant, much like the Forrester waves, the uh, Forrester in the last um, uh, two years has had couple, uh, several waves on the R on RPA. Uh, prior to that, uh, uh, Horses for Sources and, and, and Everest and others had kind of uncovered and discovered RPA. Uh, I think what the Gartner Magic Quadrant does is it is, it is a, uh, uh, one, I think it's a great uh, articulation of the state of the market today. Uh, I think it's helpful to IT and to uh, uh, businesses to see and understand the market is legitimate, it's long term. Uh, several years ago, many people said RPA was sort of uh, short term, it was a band-aid. That's not the case at all, RPA is becoming a platform. And, and so we're excited because the quadrant really, I think accurately shows the state, uh, you know, we're obviously happy to be number one, um, you know, Blue Prism uh, and, and, and number two in Automation Anywhere, number three in the Leaders Quadrant. I think the three of us, you know, really are the vast majority of the market. There's a few other players in there that are, are traditional, you know, uh, Pega sort of uh, tries to ha have an RPA product, but they're still focused on cloud, I think. And, um, uh, and the, you know, there's a number of other uh, players that have kind of niche focuses um, around certain parts of RPA, like nice systems around attended. But really, uh, the leader quadrant, I think, uh, does does accurately show the, the market. Yeah, uh, it, it reminds me of some of the software-defined uh, products in traditional IT, yes. is that today, 
relatively speaking, the dollars are small compared to the overall IT, uh, but Gartner said this is the fastest software uh, group uh, of anything that it tracks and you know billions of dollars uh, in, in forecasted in, in kind of the next five years. This is really important, right, because um, Gartner sized at 890 million, I think, uh, uh, next year, or this year, uh, Forrester's at 1.9 1. 1. billion. You know, we'll have 20% market share this year, 35% uh, 30, market share next year. Um, either way, the numbers are, 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 are accelerating. And every time a forecast comes out, they raise guidance. And that's going to happen again this year, because RPA is becoming more critical and core to uh, uh, enabling technologies like blockchain even, and, and like Internet of Things. And, and, and AI, obviously, and so uh, I think you're going to see the TAM grow considerably, uh, but I think, look, it's the fastest growing market. We're the fastest growing enterprise software company in history. We went, we went from one to 100 million ARR uh, in about uh, 20 months. Um, you know, no other company has done that. Uh, we're considerably larger right now. And, um, but I, we say that, you know, kind of in a humble way as an example of, of yeah, as, as a fact. We actually put our numbers out, even though we're a private company, because we do want to show the market, hey, this is really exci exciting what's going on here. We add eight new enterprise customers a day. We have eight of the Fortune 10 as, as, as customers today, right? We have companies rolling robots out, robots out to 100,000 employees, right? So it's, it's, um, it's very exciting what's going on here. And the enthusiasm, I mean, there's not many technologies to do where employees show extreme excitement when they realize this, you know, these robots will take this kind of mundane task from you. And that, I think that is just fantastic. Yeah, it's definitely something I saw when I attended your conference. Uh, I, I know some of the employees from, from previous jobs, some that I'd worked with yeah. uh, at, at other vendors, as well as the, the, the customers are all super excited and sharing their stories. Yeah. Um, let's get in, you, you, you talked about you know that, uh, that customer growth obviously is one of the execution uh, arms of, yes. of Gartner. If you've, if you've got revenue, you've got customers, you're, you're executing there. Uh, the completeness vision uh, yeah. you know, looked like there, there's still room for everybody in that space. Gartner had some, uh, uh, some ways that they think the market needs to mature uh, in there, but you know, what are some of the key factors that led to UI performance uh, you know, from, from Gartner's standpoint? Yeah, so I think, I think um, you know, one thing this com our company's done right, and I, 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 you know, our, our founder, Daniel Dinez, is absolutely amazing, um, is we built a company people love to work at. Uh, our culture is, is one where we've won a, 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 a dozens of awards from Inc. Magazine, comparably, recently, um, Daniel Dinez was uh, voted by employees as uh, best workplace for women, right next to Satya Nadella, right? None of our competitors are anywhere on these cultural landscapes. Culture is extremely important. We want to build a company um, that is, is the epitome of the next generation of, of, of businesses, right? Uh, I, think, I think the next would be the product then. We built a product that's open. Uh, we built a product that is extensible, with open APIs. Uh, we uh, embed in best of breed components. We don't build our, a lot of our uh, competitors have proprietary components like proprietary AI or others. Uh, no, we're very open in our, our architecture. Um, and we've made that product easily available through our community. And that's, that's uh, been a big difference between us and our competitors. Community is not just a free download though. Community is how you embrace your, 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 your users, how you, how you give them a you know, whole experience training and the ability to share their skills and best practices as well as, as obviously access to software. Um, and then finally, I think um, our customer success. So one of the best things about this last year is we've watched hundreds of customers begin to really scale. We're talking hundreds, thousands, and even hundreds of thousands of robots, right? And as they go from into HR and they work on robots to help with HR admin and HR recruiting, Right, or they go into legal uh, or, or contact centers. Call centers are really popular right now. A lot of our airline customers, you know, they really want to help um, improve the experience, not only for their customers, but their employees. Their employees don't want to be on a phone for 25 minutes either to a disgruntled person. But they have to check, you know, an employee goes and looks at like 10 different systems sometimes to go solve a problem. Robots can do all that work and cut the entire call center experience down by 60%. Everybody benefits. So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing, you know, again, uh, you know, great company, Great product and an amazing customer uh, scaling. All right, uh, we always know uh, Gartner does a very kind of point in time look uh, at yes. what they're doing. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the kind of the open in environment there. One of the things they were tracking is the ecosystem because obviously there's a lot of softwares that you need to integrate with yep. and right. software is always changing. So how does the, the technology deal uh, with those changes? You know, we always complain, it's like, oh geez, I went into Gmail and my interface looks totally different today than it did before. How does that impact stuff? So, what, you know, what's changing? Is Are there things <coughs> in the last kind of six 
to 12 months uh, that maybe the report doesn't catch? Uh, or, you know, what, what should people be well, looking One of the challenges with the report is that it took a long time to complete. Uh, we started, they started this, I think it was last October. So for us, it's multiple versions ago, right? But we still had the, the, a great spot. One of our competitors, I think, decided that, you know, they didn't like their, their result. And uh, hence, uh, MQ took a little longer than, than it should have. So yes, it, from a product perspective, we've gone a lo come a long way since, since in October. I think a number of things are important. One is, you know, we embed AI into the product and, and use uh, different components around helping with document understanding, visual understanding, conversational understanding. And so there's a lot of advancements on the ability for a robot uh, uh, whose robots learn new skills is a phrase we often use for a robot to do more and more, you know, with every release. Um, that a lot of those can be, you know, our components or or our partners. We have 700 companies today that are in our ecosystem, right? So maybe uh, a natural language processing company like Core AI, right, or uh, or an AI ML company like Element AI or SkyMind, right? Data Robot. These are all amazing companies that have great algorithms, but they don't have access to the data, right? Well, the customer's data is flowing through our platform in, in these automations. We've made it very easy to drag and drop AI, you know, to drag and drop in Watson, for example, to apply to an automation flowing through our platform, right? So, you know, at, with every release, you know, robots gain new skills, we make the product easier and easier to use, we're making it easier for, for uh, more people uh, who have even less technical skills to be able to automate, almost Excel users uh, will be able to automate with, from within Excel with a new version that's coming up, right? So, you know, all axes, you know, we're a 3,000-person company now, right? So we've got a lot of developers. So, you know, all axes, ease of use, um, uh, scalability, uh, they're all they're all growing fast. Yeah, uh, want to unpack that what you just brought up there a little bit. Uh, this is not necessarily IT rolling out these environments. <laughs> we know if it's going to be fast and uh, you know tied to the business, oftentimes it will start in the business. How is that dynamic working? You know, your customers that you've been with for a while. Right. You know, how do they work through uh, that dynamic? There are four phases in the maturity of kind of an RPA program. Right, the first phase is citizen development led. It's often led within a business, like within finance or within HR or within a call center. The second phase, IT gets involved, and the CIO gets involved. This is where they say, okay, I've got to govern this. You know, robots are like, uh, are like human workers. They have to have credentials and, and log in and, and passwords and things, so you have to manage them. And, and, and robots actually bring a lot of compliance and auditability, right? Everything a robot does is tracked and stored, and, and, and um, so uh, CIOs get involved in phase two. That's when they build out what we call the ROC, a robotic operations center, right? And this is where they scale using hundreds of robots, lots of automations, and they're really building a pipeline to serve their company. Phase three is when the CEO gets involved. This is where around our vision of a robot for every person. This is when CEO, um, the board uh, begin to think about automation and its impact across the entire enterprise. And then the kind of, I would say the aspirational phase, which we see some today, is what we call phase four, which is the gigabot economy. These are where robots are working up and down a value chain and a supply, supply chain shared amongst companies uh, in a way that the entire chain benefits, right? And um, this is actually where we see some blockchain use cases coming in, where blockchain becomes the immutable source of truth uh, for the actions a robot does between a customer and say, a, and say a manufacturer. So those four phases, that maturity model is absolutely critical, but I think it's important to note in phase two, you know, uh, serving the IT, providing a platform that they can, uh, that they know is secure, that they can, uh, that has good auditing, that, that they can scale efficiently and effectively. It's really important. So we often say, you know, we're built for both business and for IT. All right. Uh October, you've got uh, UiPath Forward coming to the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Give us a little bit of a you know sneak peek as to you know what people can be expecting uh, right. when they come to your big event. Yeah, Forward's going to be amazing this year, and and uh, you know as you know we host events all around the world. This year we'll host twenty three thousand people at our own UiPath events, uh, which is absolutely incredible. This will be our kind of flagship signature event where we will unveil a stream of new products. Uh, we have made some acquisitions that we have not announced that are part of that, that uh, we will be taking the platform um, and making it much more uh, uh, kind of uh, easy to implement on one side, to higher uh, scalability on the other side, and we'll show a lot of innovations around that. Uh, we're going to also show some disruption in some other markets. Uh, you know, RPA can really extend itself into other technologies, um, into other markets that exist today as a new way of doing things, and so we're excited to unveil uh, what I think will be some pretty strategic directions for for RPA, and finally, the real focus of, of, of this event will be about uh, customer stories, particularly customers that have scaled. We will have about two dozen customers who will talk about how they've scaled their operations, how they're adding, you know, they're doubling their automations every month, hundreds or thousands of robots, how, how they manage that, how they deploy that, how they market internally even. How do they, you know, one of the challenges they have is how do I educate within my own company, right? Uh, one of my favorite stories last week on, or two weeks ago on LinkedIn was the CEO of Singtel out of Singapore 
you know, he put out a post showing a hackathon that they ran where, and he said, we're now a, a, a believer in a robot for every Singtel employee. And the employee that won the hackathon had been there 46 years. The robot solved the problem that drove her nuts every week of her career. And she was thrilled. So, you know, this is going to be an event to celebrate also. Celebrate the community, celebrate success, celebrate automation. Yeah, uh, final question I have for you, Bobby. Uh, I, I love talking to CMOs about how technology is impacting your job. So, uh, you know, what, what's new about, you know, the digital transformation, RPA, automation first, cloud first uh, era, uh, for, you know, for CMO like yourself? So we have, um, you know, a dozen mar robots in marketing. Uh, I have my favorite one. I think I did a post on this one. Uh, my favorite one was I would I'd wake up every morning and I would go to my, my device, and I'd, I'd, my uh, mobile, and I'd, I'd go look on Google Trends, how are we doing? You know, I'd go to alexa.com or similar web.com, how are we doing as our competitors? And I'd you know, screen, take, the, take the, the screen and look in there, okay, great, we're doing great. Well, that was 10 minutes of my day, every day. Well, now we have a robot that does that every morning for me, and it takes the data, puts it into a Google Sheet, and I can track it over time, right? You know, it's an easy example. But we actually use robots uh, in a much more serious way where we move data between different systems, between Eventbrite systems or between our CRM systems um, and uh, our lead. When we get leads that come in, our robots actually take the lead based on the location and, and, and notify the right people in each, each, each region, right? So robots are you know, kind, of, kind of running you know, throughout how we operate as a company. We have our own ROC, our own robotic operations center in our business. We think about automations you know, throughout our entire organization. And, um, and it's exciting, we have interns this summer and there's an intern contest and they're building new robots and we have fun robots too, robots that help with fantasy football, right? And if you forget to make your selections, it will go fix it for you so you don't miss out, you know, perhaps on, on moving a player that's not playing out. So all kinds of, you know, fun with, with robots, whether it's marketing, HR, or legal, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting. All right, well, Bobby Patrick, thanks so much for all the updates. Congratulations on the momentum, uh, the updates in the Gartner MQ, and uh, I know we look forward to UiPath Forward uh, in Las Vegas later this year. Thanks, too. All right. Uh, as always, check out thecube.net to uh, see all of the content we've done. If you go in the search and search UiPath, you can see uh, Daniel, uh, their CEO of the previous conversation with Bobby, as well as uh, who we'll have on at the show there. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks, as always, for watching theCUBE.